In today's episode of Art of Making, the wooden chest is one of the most ancient household items. Miniature installations by Natalia Golubiva. How straw hats are made. The wooden chest is one of the most ancient household items. During a nomadic lifestyle, it served as a necessary multifunctional object. In addition to its direct purpose to store clothes, things, utensils, it decorated the room and was a stand for blankets and also acted as an integral part of the girl's dowry. When the bride was seen off, her clothes, jewelry, bed linen were put into a chest. Today, in many regions of our country, the tradition to give a bride a dowry in a chest is still preserved. Continuing ancient traditions, modern craftsmen make various chests from wood, which will organically fit into the interior of any room. We make chests from natural wood. It all started in 2001 when my uncle made a chest for his sister. She had a wedding and we didn't know what to give as a present. Then he made a wooden chest with his own hands. We're still continuing this business and make wooden chests. Now there are many material options on the market, such as medium density fiberboard, laminated chip board of different types, but it is our tradition to work with wood and we try to preserve it. In general, we start a chest from such saws. They can be of different species of wood, pine, elm tree and ash. Then we divide the same cut into several blanks. A rectangular wooden chest consists of two parts, a base and a lid. The base can be of any size, it all depends on what purpose it serves and what will be stored in it. By sewing elm wood into structural blanks, their edges are processed on a chipping machine to avoid small defects. After processing we got these planks, now they will be trimmed. The edges of the blanks are sewn at an angle of 45 degrees. By adjusting the bottom details, the craftsman checks their fit. Before gluing the bottom structure, secret openings are drilled in the corners which are later fastened with self-cuts. No less important point is the fit of the legs and the front frame that is important for the stability of the chest. Now we are in the assembly shop. All the other stages take place here. Such strips of wood are used to assemble the frame. Then we polish it, prepare it and send it for painting. There are many difficulties behind the apparent simplicity of a plain wooden box. It's necessary to calculate the size of the walls, take into account the thickness of the bars, so when connecting the box in the bottom as a reliable and durable fastening. When the box is finished, the craftsman starts manufacturing the cover, disassembled using a technology similar to the base. The plain surface is made of a solid wood, its corners, like the bottom, have a slightly rounded shape. The final touch that can turn an ordinary wooden box into a catchy interior accent is undoubtedly its decor. After we have assembled the box, we have patterns for each chest. The patterns are also made entirely of wood. We make and cut these sketches, and then they are all polished by hand. They first go like this. After grinding, we paint them, and they already acquire this color. Or we pick the color specifically for the chest. The wood itself is already beautiful, its interesting texture is perfect like everything created by nature and good enough as a decoration. Very often wooden elements with their natural colors become the main element of decoration, but sometimes the use of materials such as metal or leather only enhances this impression. 
After the box has been assembled, the patterns have all been polished. It goes for painting. First we prime the chest, grind it, then white paint is applied and such a pattern is put on top. Then we will get the effect of the wood. The finish coat will emphasize the natural texture of the wood. The tinting paint will strengthen the color of the wooden chest and the patenting agents will outline the details and give it even more individuality. Artistic carvings with stylized national ornaments, the presence of silver or bronze inlay, leather embossments, paintings. This techniques enhance the design of the chest with some charm and luxury. Of course, each of the listed elements requires special skill, experience and peculiar secret features of technology. We have classic chests. There are such traditional chests with our patterns, ornaments. Here is our Shanurak, Kazana. There are several types of our traditional patterns. The colorful appearance and high strength of the wood makes the chest a real family relic. It is durable and can be passed on from generation to generation. The inner space of the chest allows you to store a lot of various things and its original decor will decorate any space. Forged handles, hidden lit opening system, in combination with elegant loops, are made in a single style with common chest decor. An upholstery with velour fabric gives the inside a shade of comfort and makes the item as functional as possible. A weighty, natural wood chest has an amazing ability to attract attention, share its energy, pacify and even inspire. And being the owner of an exquisite chest made of wood is a great wealth. Creativity can be very different. Someone needs canvases and paints to implement their ideas and someone needs needles and threads to create amazing things. Today there are many types of art and miniatures are one of them. This type of artistic creativity combines the features of two traditional types of art, painting and sculpture. From the first one, it has got techniques for working with color, shadows, and from the second, attention to details, dynamics, and energy. Miniature installations by Natalia Golubeva is a sight for sore eyes and pure pleasure for lovers of real aesthetics. I am a but in the time, I'm a doll maker, but recently I've been making a lot of miniatures. And I came to this through dolls, because dolls needed different accessories. They needed some kind of environment, some dishes and more. I decided to make a house first, then another house. But when the organizers of the exhibitions found out that I was engaged in miniature, they asked me to make a yurt for the Silk Road project. And I really liked it. By the way, I learned a lot when I started making a yurt. In the process of making a yurt, so to speak, I realized that I did not have enough national Kazakh dishes. And I decided to make dishes, and now I will show you a small process of how I do it. Here is my pottery wheel. It's very small. It is for children. 
Since I'm engaged in miniature, this will is quite enough for me. I'm taking a piece of clay, you can use any clay, red or black. The alignment of the clay mass is one of the difficult stages. The main piece of clay is pressed in the center, squeezing the lamp the craftsman seeks for flexibility of the clay. Embracing the pot on all sides and smoothly shifting the fingers to the center, the walls are foamed. By removing excess clay, the shape is given. When the workpiece has passed the processing stage, it is dried and separated from the circle with a pottery string. The pot is dried and we gave it a different shape. I needed just such a pot for my interior. Now this pot is dried to such a bone state, in any case it is not burned yet and therefore it can simply soften from the water, turn sour and lose its shape. We now put it in the oven, we burn it, it's called biscuit firing. It's the first firing, it goes through several stages, the first one dries the dish at 100 degrees. Then goes the next firing at 570 degrees. And then the pot is fired at up to 1080 degrees. Then it gradually cools down. In no case should it be removed hot from the stove. It is quite obvious that creative design requires painting dishes of figures in different colors. Thanks to special techniques, you can make interesting color transitions and overflows. Create an imitation of some kind of texture, give the product a mysterious glow or luxurious shine. This is all painted in underglaze colors. There are underglaze paints, there are colored glazes. For example, this vessel, such as soup bowl, is covered with colored glaze. I love dolls and therefore have different pictures in the form of these girls. The very first girl picture was such a pretty Japanese girl. With the help of various pigments, dyes, you can lay out an ornament create multi-layered drawings of voluminous deep color which will be poured in all shades like a magic rainbow. I have been making a yurt for about a month and a half with everyone. I thought about the idea itself, about the designs. All my furniture is made of beer cardboard. It's very light, pliable. In fact, everything is easily cut, decorated and painted. Miniature is an opportunity to visualize the biggest dreams in a small composition. While being very detailed, this craft requires patience, theory and hard work. I thought there should be blankets. I took pieces of cloth and made such a blanket, with such a pillow. Dastarhan in any house is the most important thing and it's hard to imagine any Dastarhan without bar socks and without nice national utensils. Here is a dombra. I really like musical instruments. Although I am not a musician, I always love to make musical instruments and it's hard to imagine a real yurt without a dombra. And the dombra is also made of the same cardboard, 
just painted. And even my strings are made of fishing line. There are strings too. Unfortunately, you cannot play it. Yurt looks fantastically realistic. Interior items as accurately as possible reflect the interior decoration, appearance and give the impression of a holistic and harmonious composition. Textiles are used to create a cozy atmosphere, colored upholstery of walls, knitted mats with fringe and blankets. You know what surprised me the most about the yurt? The fact that the yurts were assembled by women mostly because men were always in business with their herds. Well, you can imagine assembling a house for a woman. This is not a hut that needs to be cut down, put up, has been standing for centuries. But a yurt is such an amazing object. It is a house, a real house. But nevertheless, it's easy. Well, not easy, of course, but it's relatively doable for two or three women to assemble and put up a yurt. They put up a house together. It's just amazing. Miniature visualizations by Natalia Golbiva are amazing creations. Author's dolls made of textiles and clay, figurines, fairy characters and animals, household and furnishings, musical instruments, kitchen utensils, a stack of books, all of them successfully reflect the highest level of execution and vision of the craftswoman, and how much remains to be done. And the more you do this, the more exciting it gets. I have a lot of ideas and plans. A hat is an accessory that is relevant in all seasons. In addition to protective functions, there is something mysterious in the hat that amazingly changes a person, complements his image and turns an ordinary person into a bright figure full of mystery. Making hats is a whole science. Let's dive a little into the process of making them and learn how this interesting accessory has become so popular. I was inspired by hats in America when I saw how people wear them there, how the hat-wearing culture is developed there, Craftsmen show how to do them. I liked it very much. Then I thought, why not try it? For the production of hats, first of all, you need a hat blank from the material of the desired color and texture. Classic material is felt. Felt hats can be of different types and models. But what is felt? Felt is a type of feltered cloth made of sheep's, goat's wool, or a thin bunny puff. Of course, the wool should be of the best quality, otherwise this material simply will not be able to hold the shape of the hat. The felt requires more effort since the material itself is capricious and to give it shape, make sure it can keep it. Summer hats also depend on the type of straw. For example, there is a straw that is weaved manually. This process takes up to several months. There is a kind of straw that is weaved automatically with a machine. These, of course, are semi-finished products in a way. Straw is usually used to sew summer hats. It is light and easy to process. Straw is the dry stalks of cereals and legumes. In dry form, the straw is very brittle, but after sewing, it acquires plasticity and softness. And when it dries, it becomes hard again, which allows the product to retain its shape. 
We use three types of straw. We have two types. One made of rice paper. They are weaved automatically. We also have exclusive straw that is weaved in Ecuador. It is called taquilla. It's made of palm fibers, which grows only in that part of the world, and it is woven by locals. There are a lot of production straw caps, and we order it from there. And then, at the request of the client, we give it shape according to a specific size and decoration. Now we will make a summer hat from Takia and an autumn hat from felt. At the first stage we take glue. We use textile glue that is made from starch. Before using it in glue, the starch is modified several times. This is done in order to create a safe glue, not like it used to be before, with mercury and hatters suffered from madness. Now it is different, everything is safe and you also don't have to worry that somehow glue will affect your health when you are wearing a hat. We will now process this felt cap with glue. It is important that the glue is well absorbed. In general, it is better to soak and squeeze it so that it will be stronger and retain its shape for a long time. While the felt is soaked with glue, we will make a straw hat. We also treat straw caps with the same glue. Since straw caps are woven by hand, there is a lot of extra straw left. You just need to cut the extra straw, also treat it with glue and leave it so it is well absorbed. After that, the blanks are held above the steam due to which they acquire plasticity, and then they are put on a blank, then you carefully give it a desired shape. During stretching, the cap is attached to the mold at the place of attachment with the row, and the brims themselves are fixed with cloths. The hat blank can be both solid and consist of several parts. Some hat models, such as cylinder, will be difficult to remove from the mold if it is solid. There are three parts of the hat bottom, crown, and brims. Each of them go through its own way of creation. Well, our hats are finally dry, now we will remove them, process the brims, sew the inner ribbon, and decorate them. The measuring tape is a rather important element. It stitches around the circumference of the inside of the crown and prevents the hat from stretching. In some hats, they sew a lining so that the inside doesn't grease. Here we have prepared a ribbon with our logo. Now we will sew it to the hat. For this we use a special machine, it is called a post-type machine. I'll show you how convenient it is. When sewing we do not deform the hat. Hats can be decorated in a variety of ways. Classic style, tape is at the junction of crown and brims. There are many options, it all depends on the imagination of a hatter. There are leather belts, pigtails, gracefully decorated strips of the same material as hat, flowers, feathers, brushes, and even firing. Here we have such a beauty, gentle fedora. In the end, we got a summer hat with such a ribbon. Now we will pack it in special boxes. They can be used both for storage and for transportation. And these are our loose leaves, instructions for care for a hat, and our postcard. We usually send our products with a signature from Almaty with love to other countries. And there are also cards which indicate the size of each hat. The headdress is a statement about the identity of its owner, but more importantly about how he sees himself. The sketchy, elegant hats are like the owner's personal autograph. Knowing the mysterious nature of headgear firsthand, Hutter 
Her Lagash embodies into reality any idea that satisfies the most demanding requirements and preferences.